Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a common but an often missed diagnosis of an entity called as childhood or a pediatric obstructive sleep apnea. We've discussed often about adult sleep apnea, but in this video, I want to highlight some of the important points about this entity, childhood sleep apnea. So I'm Dr. Manveer Bhatia, a senior neurologist and a sleep specialist with expertise for adult and childhood sleep disorders. So what is this condition called as childhood sleep apnea and does it really exist? You will be surprised to know that it's very common. It's about one to 4% of the children can have this entity. What is it? And how do these children present and how should parents become alert or sensitive to this problem? So these children usually have a very restless sleep. Uh, the children kind of move all around the bed. They get into abnormal positions, try and sleep with their head down, with their neck extended, so as to try and open up the airway. They have a very noisy breathing. So in adults, we have snoring. In children, we may just have noisy breathing or you may just observe just some abnormal breathing. There are long pauses during which the child doesn't take a breath. And as a result of this, they are, like I said before, very restless in their sleep. What else can happen? Uh, frequent bedwetting is one big problem or accompaniment of this. Very difficult to wake up in the morning. So as they start going to school, they go later, seven years, eight years, you find that even after nine hours of sleep, eight hours, 10 hours, you can't wake them up. They feel they are very deep sleep. Then they are very irritable during the day. They have a lot of mood changes, a lot of behavioral changes, irritability. They start uh, decreasing performance in their school. Academic uh, changes are noticed by their teachers. Teachers will complain that they come and they tend to put their head down. So all these are subtle signs of a child who is having a pediatric sleep apnea. Very frequent uh, upper respiratory infections, frequent cold and coughs, almost four to five times in a year. What are the common causes? Two major causes are there for children. One is weight gain. In fact, obesity has a higher prevalence or it's more often associated with the sleep apnea. And second is a local abnormality, um, upper jaw, lower jaw, nasal problems, those craniofacial areas we call them. Or those uh, are also contributing to the obstructive sleep apnea. So all I can say is that be alert to the symptoms of noisy breathing, very restless sleep, difficulty in waking up, bedwetting if it has not been controlled, sitting up in sleep, occasionally even sleep talking, sleep walking can be a part of sleep apnea. And in the next uh, videos, we will talk about how does one manage this and what should one do if you do recognize that a child has this. I hope this has been of value and will help you to identify this problem in your children. Thanking you.